1987, a game by the name of Metal Gear is released to the public on the MSX2 platform. Originally having been developed under a senior associate with Konami, the game was passed over to an employee who had only been with the company for a year, Hideo Kojima. Struggling with the MSX2's hardware limitations, Hideo was forced to reduce the number of enemies and bullets on screen. Taking the direction of the game from action-based, he gathered inspiration from the movie The Great Escape and reverted the focus of the game to being stealth-based. Although it was criticized for a poor control scheme and player vulnerability, reviewers noted that the game showed great promise. Little did they know that the promise would expand across three decades. Introducing Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, Hideo's final send-off to the Metal Gear world. A game of intricately designed systems that blend together so well, I found it harder to put the controller down after each session. Unlocking more weapons, more items, more buddies, and improving upon my home base, every exercise in the enhancement of myself became more rewarding as time went on. Even after I unlocked the game's true ending, I found myself slithering through the world searching for everything I had missed. Where other games may have possessed these features, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain looks to perfect them, and it comes very close. Stealth is a mechanic of the series that longtime fans have come to love and appreciate, and Phantom Pain doesn't disappoint. Players will find themselves sneaking around landing tranquilizer shots, interrogating enemies, and performing kung fu takedowns with a couple of hours of booting up the game. And being a Metal Gear game, I can't imagine playing without the ability to ship myself around in a cardboard box. Not only does Phantom Pain bring back the go-to weapon, but it's revitalized through upgrades that include different camos, state-of-the-art stickers, and bodacious moves. But as veterans already know, you better have a plan B when the box betrays you. When moments break into chaotic firefights, the transitions from Sam Fisher to Rambo mode feel completely natural. Missing your opening at a critical takedown doesn't spell the end for Big Boss, as you have a rather large array of weapons and gadgets to use on enemies. From your usual arsenal of assault weapons and explosives, you can now use choppers, bionic arm weapons, and other various tools. All of these choices add up to a senseless amount of different angles you can choose to take for each mission. For example, I found myself going back to try one of the game's opening missions. With the tools I had unlocked over the course of roughly 20 hours, I was able to replay the mission over 5 times. Trying a mixture of stealth and all-out methods, I had a completely different experience each time. Phantom Pain features over 300 different upgrades for you and your NPC companions. These companions have quite a variety of abilities between them. Take D-Dog along with you to spot enemies or take out the occasional foe. Maybe you're not looking for animal companionship. Have Quiet perch up on the nearest hillside to keep enemies out of your personal space. And in case you're looking to get things done fast, drive D-Walker around to rip bases to shreds. You may find that breaking from stealth is costly, as killing enemies means that you'll be unable to use them in your expansion of Mother Base. Originally from Peace Walker, the Fulton system is back to help excavate enemies, weapon systems, and vehicles back to base in order to build your defenses. Use your newly acquired soldiers and gear in an effort to boost various teams responsible for tasks around Mother Base, your biggest benefit being the ability to research new tools, items, buddy equipment, and weapons. Don't forget to make room for everything through expansion. Building more platforms for each group on Mother Base means bigger and better upgrades but it also helps against invading players via one of the online components Phantom Pain contains. I don't know how long it'll take, but I'll make it bigger, better than before. God, what should I do? Boss? Tell me. Tell me like you used to. Metal Gear is rooted in its rich and intricate story, but after playing through a gripping introduction sequence, I found myself playing through a blend of inspiring and dull moments. Emotionally engaging scenes were often followed by obscure and unnecessary missions. While the majority of the game felt brilliant and awesome, some of it felt tedious and sluggish. The game even forces players to replay certain missions with different difficulty settings and mission parameters towards the end. This, coupled with unexplained motives, poor pacing, and unfinished story arcs will most likely leave the player scratching their heads wondering where the rest of the game is. Even after unlocking the true ending, it felt like a third of the game's content had been cut. This feeling wasn't helped when I came across an extra cutscene other players had found on the PlayStation 4's collector's disc. Having been slashed from the actual game, it seems this scene, packaged with the intended mission, would have helped finish some of the story's arc. But, I wouldn't recommend seeking this material out until after you've finished the game. And even then, 
and might just leave you with more questions than answers. But to make a point clear, as beautiful as the visuals of the game are, the good parts of the story are just as, if not more, incredible, some leaving me in a state of wonder. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain is by far my favorite game in the series. With so much to do, but not so much that it feels like cookie cutter content, I'll definitely be finding myself playing this game for quite some time, and even more so once the promised Metal Gear Online launches later next month. With that in mind, I can forgive some of the poor story execution, as the rest of the game really makes up for it. I give Phantom Pain a solid 10 out of 10.